And it's a very good afternoon to the gelding. And good afternoon, gelding, because we're recording this on Friday afternoon because uh, you and I both have engagements at different football matches tomorrow. Uh, good morning. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon, Professor. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Good afternoon, listeners. But you'll be hearing this tomorrow morning. Yes. But, yeah. Out and about tomorrow. I'm off to the G. And um, I'm off. I'm off to Terrelgan to see the uh, bitter battle between Terrelgan and Morwell. Always a very good match. Oh, rivalry, hey? Oh, yeah, nothing like rivalry. So who are you barracking for? Terrelgan. Okay. Weren't you kind of tied involved with Morwell? Uh, never involved with Morwell. Involved with Morwell East. Oh, Morwell East. Okay. Yeah, so makes it okay. a lot easier. The burgundy jacket, Professor. Yeah, but I I did live in Morwell. So at, at one stage, my allegiances were with Morwell, but, you know, shifted. That's coach, wrong. Coach, coached at the club. So, you know, it's naturally Terralgan now. Now it's just Terralgan. There's, there's no Morwell. Okay. All right. That's All right, fine. Gelding. So well, we good better... luck tomorrow, and I hope you enjoy. Well, and good luck to your Tigers, Gelding. So hopefully they can finish off the uh, season with a win. Doesn't matter whether they win or not, Gelding, you're still going to have number one pick in the draft. Well, that's right, Professor. Um, it's kind of, um, <coughs> I wonder tomorrow, there's a lot of signs here off before, I'll have to buy a record next year with everyone jumping ship out of Richmond at the moment. So <coughs> it'll be quite interesting. It will, Gelding. All right, Mooney Valley races tomorrow, nine race card. The first at one ten pm, the last at five forty five pm. Gel Gelding Ned Racing Clubs. <laughs> one one ten. That's a little bit late. Five forty five, and it's still winter. Uh, What's um, going on? Well, Professor, Channel Seven are doing a bit of a doing the coverage on um, Channel Seven, but it seems to run in nicely, doesn't it? To the six o'clock news. news or. Yeah, oh, is that on? Well, maybe they're doing the football as well. But um, I'm seeing what time, like here, even um, Randwick tomorrow, uh, 11.45 start. They've got 10 races and finish at 5.05. Um, seems to make a little bit more sense, doesn't it? But, yeah, prison, prisoners of the network, Gelding. No, oh, that's right. But racing clubs, Professor, um don't we speak well of them and um, you know our opinion of them, but um, interesting to know, read about um, the Melbourne Racing Club where we're members, Professor. Yeah, there seems, and, there seems, um, seems to be a bit of dissent, Gelding. Do I detect dissent amongst some of the membership? <clears throat> well, there's certainly a um, a bid to save our, save our Melbourne Racing Club group and um, to me they seem to have... Um, a pretty, a pretty good um, platform to run on, um, Professor. Um, might be a better platform than Donald Trump's. What the platform <laughs> he's running on, but uh, the save our uh, Melbourne Racing Club. Uh, I think um, the new mounting yard, which is on the side, whereas if you're sitting in the pavilion, you can't see the horses parade before the race. Um. And now we're going to build a new grandstand after building the new track. And I just see the goals of the new Melbourne Racing Club uh, to return the um, mounting yard to its original position. So you can actually see it while you're sitting in the grandstand. Um, ruling out building an expensive new grandstand. Pick. And Professor, the third and most important, ensure... Oh, hang on, hang on, Gelling. Before you, hang on, Gelling. Oh, I was going to say before you go on, it wouldn't have anything to do with Sandown, would it? Well, you know, why would we want to sell a racetrack like that when they should be racing there every Wednesday, every week? Gelling, you when know? you've got when you've got property, you don't get rid of your asset. That's that's uh, rule number one. Yeah, well, obviously not committees, um, but let me just say, apart from members backlash uh, well-known owners Rupert Lee and Colin McKenna um, you know that have owned some very good horses said uh, I think Colin McKenna's quote was the best what have they done to Caulfield race what they have done to Caulfield 
race course is a joke. The responsible people who have made these irresponsible decisions should be axed. Oh. Um, it is with interest that, as you said, Professor, a long-term CEO has um, resigned and the chairman... Yeah, ch will... Chairman's resigned as well. Yeah, chairman's going as well. So, you know, let's waste the members' money. Let's not, you know, tweak a few things at Caulfield. By all means, update them and tweak them. <clears throat> but you don't have to spend $64 million of members' money and maybe throw $10 million at Sandown and make it a little bit more comfortable. Oh, and attractive. As I said, Gelding, you're speaking common sense, right? And and Professor, did you get um some of the functions this year to go to the races? Like, you know, advertising, you know, pay four hundred and sixty five dollars to go to a dining room during the spring carnival. Yeah, it's um, outside outside my budget, Gelding. Well outside. And your budget's pretty good, Professor. Yeah, it's not bad. But not a lot of people have your budget. No. No, but uh, I wouldn't be paying that sort of money, Gelding. All right, Gelding. Let's get back to the let's get back to the racing. Um, <laughs> let's get back. Let's well, get back and try and get some money for our listeners. Well, Gelding, we could spend an hour talking about uh, what's happened at Caulfield, but I think let's see how it plays out because there'll be plenty of discussion. I think in future editions of that's racing that uh, we'll be looking at what's happening at the at the committee level and uh, who's doing what. Uh, yes, Professor. What, you, what was their name before the Melbourne Racing Club? Uh, the Victorian Amateur Turf Club, Gelding. Oh, very Amateur Turf Club. <laughs> I I'm not too sure. Oh, well, you know, it's always when, when you've got uh, those initials, Gelding, you always wonder what they mean, don't you? Well, Professor, hopefully they're, uh, well, they're just living up to their tradition, I suppose. All right, Gelding, the tracks are soft five at the moment, but uh, we warn punters that that might change between now and when the races, when they jump tomorrow morning. Um, there's rain predicted, so the, every chance the track might be downgraded. <laughs> hey, it's going to be an interesting day, Professor. Mooney Valley, um, you know, track out five metres from normal true, you know, a um, bit of rain around tonight. But I do notice tomorrow strong northerly winds are predicted, up to 50 k's, and um, it's going to be a sunny 22 degrees. So could be a drying wind out there too. So well, it might yeah. might be upgraded, not downgraded. Well, Professor, I think our normal warning goes to our punters to you know pay attention to what the conditions are and the way the track's running and um and and uh always pay attention to the first couple of races because that might dictate <coughs> how you select your horses uh, later on in the meeting exactly right professor the pattern of racing um can be done early but um anyway here we are on a friday night trying to tip winners for uh you know something that's 18 hours away without knowing the weather so we just put that little caveat on um, the tips, Professor. All right, Gelding, what are your two best bets for Mooney Valley? Well, Professor, I'm um, going with Jamie Carr for both of my tips for tomorrow. I, I think she's um, she's come back now, and um, I think we've got the Jamie Carr of old, Professor. She seems to be riding fantastic at the moment. At the moment, you know, we're we're very lucky. Blake Shin's in fine form. Jamie Carr's in fine form. Mark Zara's in pretty good form. So, yeah, look, Professor, I'm, I like a couple that Jamie's on tomorrow. The first one being um, in race four, number three photograph. Professor, um, interesting that um, this is a horse that's won a maiden up in um, Scone or Scone. Whichever one you want to do it, or maybe you can get Johnny Vanderpoel on the line and to discuss. Get him or, to tra get him to translate for us, Gilding. Exactly, and has then come back and um, won at Sandown Hillside um, over thirteen hundred. Professor um, trained by Godolphin James Cumming, so the Blue Army and Jamie Carr on board. A horse back from a spell with two wins. To me, that's just um, 
you know, those those points just stand out to me. Um, can get round about the four dollars, Professor. So you know, it might be a nice little each way bet, but also um, one that I like. I then go on to um, race seven, Professor Horse Nine for Jamie um, for O'Brien. Uh, Jamie Carr's hopped on board. See what I see. Uh, this is a horse we were following, Professor, before it went out to the spell, watching it go through its grades. Um, just fantastically, uh, Professor. And as we, um, as I quickly look for it, race seven, number nine. Where we see what we see, Professor. Eight starts to six wins. So Danny O'Brien took it through the classes. Um, now coming back for what I think should be a pretty um, successful spring campaign for this horse. I think it'll get to group level. Um, tomorrow we're getting the nice odds of, you know, just under, just on $3. So I like both the Jamie Cars mount. Race four, number three, photograph into, into a race seven, number nine, see what I see. Uh, uh, Professor, you like? Yeah, Gelding, I'm going uh, a little bit earlier than you to start with. Uh, in race two, the Brooks running our plate. It's an open three-year-old race for Colts and Geldings over 1,200 metres. I like horse number six, Daggers. Gelding coming out of barrier one. It's had one win out of one, for one, from one start, so it's 100% at the moment. And I certainly <laughs> like those percentages. At one, uh, it's only started Sandown Lakeside over 1,300 metres by four and a half lengths going away, Gelding. At, uh, one easy. Put the accelerator down. I looked at I looked at the uh, film of it again yesterday. I looked at the sectionals too, Gelding. Um, it's whole race time, nine lengths better than standard time for the race. Oh, this is a horse with a bit of uh, potential, Professor Daggers. Um you know, by I'm invincible. So yeah, I like I like the way it won at Sandown up that hill, Professor. So you know, can see it scooting around Mooney Valley tomorrow um nicely. I like the bet. Yeah, Kelding, it only needs a little bit of luck in the running and I think it'll be far too good for uh, anything it's against. Luke Curry in the saddle and trained by Basutin and uh, Natalie Young. Mm. That just jumps from barrier one and gets out in front and catch me if you can, isn't it, Professor? Oh, especially over 1,200 metres, Gelding. It's 100 metres shorter, so uh, it'll just flick the switch a little bit earlier than it did uh, at Sandown. Um, would they be your instructions to uh, Luke Curry, Professor? Uh, yeah, just <laughs> just get going. Sorry, and I'm don't... making myself laugh, Professor. Yeah. <laughs> don't, I'm don't laughing st... at my own jokes. Yeah, get out first and don't stop until you get to the winning post. It's a beautiful thing. All right, my second selection's in race eight, gilding the Carline Stakes, the uh, feature race on the program. I like in this one, number nine, Bold Bastille, gilding coming out of barrier six. It's had five starts for the very impressive four wins and no placing, so 80% win and place rate. It's won its last three in a row, including two listed races, gilding. Uh, it was sixth in the Blue Diamond Prelude, and it was beaten by uh, three lengths by the eventual winner of the Blue Diamond Hey, Asugi, Carr uh, had the ride last time on the threat Mornington Glory, but she's jumped off that. Um, also, Bold Bastille only carrying 50 and a half, Gelding. So if the wind gets behind it, it'll probably blow away. <laughs> we'll be out there, Professor. Um, <coughs> look, the Hayes brothers have done a fantastic job. You know, those races were as a two-year-old and they, they gathered, didn't quite stay the... Um, <laughs> Oh, excuse me, the um, 1,200 professor, but um, so they dropped it back to 1,000 metres and it's been undefeated since it's dropped back to that distance. So very interesting, Professor. You've gone for the same racing colours as well as your first tip. Yes, and uh, gelding the instructions to the jockey would be exactly the same. Jump, jump from and num run. Jump from, jump from number six, see daylight, go for it. <coughs> oh. I like it, Professor. I could see you in the mounting yard. <laughs> Remind me of someone, um, a Radio Sydney host, 
<laughs> who used to be an Australian uh, rugby coach that we saw one day put on a performance in the mounting yard. I'm glad you and I both saw it, Gilly, because we were we were in awe about uh, just how the connections can make their point to both the uh, jockey and the uh, and the trainer. Uh, do you want to fill people in on it, or? Oh well, um, <coughs> let's let's just say the person was animated. And how far away were we, Gilly? About four hundred meters. Oh, I wouldn't have thought that far, Professor. Like. We're in the stand and it was in front 100, of us. 100 metres. Yeah, it was a Miss Finland ride um, of Craig Williams. <laughs> and uh, where unfortunately Ellen Jones had been willowed, I think. <laughs> and uh, David Hayes seemed to be the third member of the group. And um, <laughs> as we said, it was a very animated discussion by a coach giving a side a fair rads, I would have thought, Professor. I thought I thought the uh, owner was going to get the whip out at one stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jockey and trainer were both seemed to be very quiet. Yes, there was only one person doing the talking gelding. Yes, and and this was after the mounting yard had had um, vacated, and they were the only three left in the mounting yard. Oh yeah, there was no doubt about what was going on there, gelding. All right, well, uh, my two selections tomorrow: race two, horse six, daggers; race eight, <coughs> horse nine, bold. Bastille. Now, the Professor's Parlay, Gelding, my football team let me down last week. There was, I've said to you a couple what? of times since last Saturday, Gelding, that there wasn't there wasn't a surer bet than the Gold Coast beating Melbourne at the Gold Coast. Gold Coast had not been beaten by an interstate <laughs> team. Melbourne had gone through the week from hell. Um, and it was how far Gold Coast, and it wasn't just how far Gold Coast, it was by the length of the street. Now, not only did Melbourne win, they also won by 50-plus, Gelding. So, uh, let me Almost say... a 10-goal victory, Professor. Yeah, I know. Um, what I can say is Hawthorne did beat Richmond and Pericles came third. So, unfortunately, we're back to 16 of 33. So, we're dipped back under the 50%. We're back to 48%. Well, try this week, Professor. But we're trying to get you know, the horse racing. The horse is a hard bit. Supposedly. Yes, I'm trying not to make the other two hard, Gelding. So, all right. Now, we're going to Randwick tomorrow. And the <laughs> reason we're going to Randwick is because we're looking for the best bet as far as you are concerned. You and I are concerned for the day. And the best bet we feel is at Randwick, race eight, horse six, fangirl. Would you tell the viewers why we've decided that that's the bet of the day? Oh, Professor, um, so it's the first group one for the racing season. Um the 1,400 metres at the Wink Stakes, um, as we as you'd regularly hear us, and they're probably sick of me saying it, the best jockey um, in Australia, James McDonald's aboard Fangirl, for Chris Waller, uh, Fangirl, last start campaign, or well, last year it came out and won this race first up. Faces a very, some very good horses that we have backed and will continue to back in Reef Rocket via Sistina and uh, Zarduzzi, Professor. Um, but I just think Fangirl, you know, potentially could be <laughs> the horse of the spring and a possible Cox Plate horse, Professor. So first up over 1,400, Walla McDonald. Um, you got everything going for you, I would have thought. So let's go, fangirl. All right, and we're going to parlay that into Gelding. The Premier League's back. Aren't we happy? Oh, Professor. Professor. <laughs> oh, Professor. I thought you told me we were, we were staying away from the Premier League and oh. the draws and the... Well, I'm just going to try... Just hear me out on this one, Gelding. Um We've got Manchester City at home, who were champions of the Premier League last year, playing Ipswich, who have just been promoted to the Premier League from the Championship last season. They're currently 17th. They lost their first game, which is good form as far as I'm concerned. They're playing Manchester City at Manchester City. I think that might be a bridge too far for Ipswich. You know, I, I, would, th I would think that 5-0 would be... Uh, a uh, scoreline that we could predict, but all we need is one nil, Gelding. Happy to trust you, Professor, but uh, we'll have to maintain the right of reply. 
All right. You, you've got the right of reply next week if yeah. uh, if it runs yeah, off the rails. I hope I don't get an old dear um, text. <laughs> so do I, Gilly. And we'll parlay that into the Melbourne Storm at home to beat the Dolphins. That's tomorrow's game. I think it starts at about 4.30, Gelding. Um, Melbourne Storm at home. They've had a terrific season. They're first on the NRL ladder. Plus 171 points differential. They've won 17 of 21. Uh, very hard to beat at uh, Olympic Park, Gelding. Ninth, the Dolphins. They've lost a few in a row. Um, I don't think they'll make the finals, Gelding, after after looking almost a dead set certainty for most of the season. Wow. Now, could that have anything to do with the fact that Wayne Bennett's already been appointed South Sydney coach for next year? I, I, I don't know how that works, Gelding. I don't know how you're coaching one team, but you're going off to another. And they all know where you're going the next year. Yeah, look, um, I don't know, Professor. I, I always used to say it was ridiculous. More coaching, I, I can say. How do you inspire a whole team when you, you know you're moving? I find that a bit hard. But even players, like, you know, players say in July they're moving to another club next year. Uh, um, yeah, that, that always worried me. But now that what I've seen... With the AFL and players, you know, like remember, I'm barracking for a club where everyone seems to be jumping off, yeah, you know, jumping off the uh, the ship that, as it's going down. Um, that includes the CEO, the coach from last year, and now all the players. So, yeah, is it is it good? Like, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably change my mind if if Damien Hardwick. Did you want to go through what Damien Hardwick did last year to Richmond, saying I'm I'm buggered, I've got to have a break, rah rah rah. You know, when when the rumour mills out he's going to Gold Coast for for more money and he was on a million at Richmond and he was gonna get more up there and he decided to go to Europe and have a holiday. Would you rather the Bennett situation or have something like that where he just kind of walks out on the club? knowing full well that he's going elsewhere. Well, but Gelding, he did need a break. <laughs> he did need a break before he went to Brisbane. Yes. <laughs> yes. Look, don't Gel they, yeah. they build in holidays for AFL sides? Yeah, look, I... Players... Like, I, I've, just, I've just changed my mind on that a little bit. Like, yeah. especially with that situation... If, and, and look, you know, look, the rumours around this this year, you know, everyone said, um, you know, all, all these players are going elsewhere and, you know, you hear rumours, some buying houses in a state and, you know, going up there, going through their rooms and stuff like that. Well, yeah, let's, why keep it a secret? If you want to, if you want to have a trade up to someone, why not work on it and do it and, Anyway, but I'm sure all these things will come out next week anyway, but, you know, it's just giving um, the sun some fodder for during the year, isn't it, to fill up the papers. Yeah, it is, Gelding. All right, the Professor's Parlay for tomorrow. Race eight at Randwick, horse number six fangirl into Manchester City to beat Ipswich in the Premier League, into Melbourne Storm to beat the Dolphins in the NRL. All right, Odd. Gelding. The odds, Professor, or uh, not sure yet? I haven't done the odds. <laughs> All righty. I haven't done the odds. Uh, I would suggest that uh, the win parlay would be valued at about three to one and the place parlay will be about three to two. Oh, still nice little odds. Nice little juicy odds, Professor. Yes, they are, Gelding. All right, Gelding, until next week, and that's racing and hopefully back to the normal time, it's good luck. And good punting.